Hi, I'm Steve Root. This is Root's Kitchens, Bedrooms, Bathrooms. Thank you for joining us as we experiment on a new way of working. Normally, Margaret and Stacey would be coming to your homes and taking accurate measurements of your room. At the moment, that just isn't possible. However, if you can send us the measurements, then they'll be able to continue the design process. They're going to share their screens and video call you so you're still fully involved through the whole process. The reason we want to do this is because at the end of the last lockdown, all of the factories got very, very busy very quickly, which meant delays on people's orders. And if we can work through your design process, then at the end of the lockdown, hopefully you'll be in a position to order and that will mean you'll get your room sooner. The equipment you'll need is a tape measure, a pen and paper, and a camera or smartphone. Now let's start with the tape measure. We normally measure in metric in our industry because it's easier to be more accurate. And on this particular tape measure, the metric scale is at the bottom and it's in centimetres, shown by the little red CM sign here, which is how you'll find most tape measures are. Each whole centimetre, so between the five and the six, is divided by 10 smaller lines so you can be even more accurate. And how accurate do we need to be? Generally, to half a centimetre. So for example, if I measure this worktop here, I'll put the tape measure to the back of the worktop, look along the front, and I can see that's just over the 63 centimetres line. But we can round it, and rounding to 63 centimetres on this one is spot on. Next to it, this worktop is actually halfway between the 58 and the 59 centimetre mark, so I can call that 58.5 centimetres, or 58 and a half centimetres. Now let's start drawing out the room. So the plan we're going to draw isn't to scale. Firstly, look around the room and look at where all the walls go in and out. And then we're gonna draw a simple shape, giving each line plenty of space so that we can write numbers next to it. This box here is actually a small piece of boxing and not to scale to the rest of the room, but I have the space to write things next to it. Now we're going to start marking on windows and doors and we do those by drawing boxes over the line. And again this isn't to scale, just give yourself plenty of space to write things down. This last door is actually not a door, it's an opening and it goes right up to the edge of the wall there which is why the box goes all the way there. You can also put a couple of marks on to highlight where doors are. The next step is to start taking measurements all around the room, so we'll do that together. With the tape measure, you put the end into a corner and we read all the way along, and for this wall, that's 39 centimetres. So, 39. Our showroom display is a little on the square side You've probably got boxing or other protrusions in your room, so I've made some pretend boxing for me to measure around. 66 and the deck is 16.5. This wall gets slightly harder because we've got furniture in front of the wall and I can't measure to it. Sometimes you can measure over the top, but most of the time we can just work it out by measuring around it. What we're going to do first of all is draw the furniture as dotted lines on our plan. Now I can measure from the wall to the furniture. Notice how this tape measure goes to the wall and not to the end of the boxing. So on my plan, I'm going to clearly mark that I'm measuring to the end wall uh, past that boxing. Curves can be slightly hard to measure, but we only need an approximation. In this case, all we need to know is roughly how deep it is, which is about five centimetres. We normally measure to the outside of the architrave, so that's 14 centimetres. 
and that means for the rest of the width we can hook our tape measure over the architrave itself. This wall is longer than the rest of the room itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an estimate of roughly where the wall would be. 24 centimetres. And for the windows... The last corner, 39. If you can, get an extra measurement or two across the whole room. Four three nine. Try and keep the tape measure straight when you're doing long lengths. Four three nine. I measured from there to there. It's four three nine. Now we're going to check our measurements by adding up each section to see that it measures the same as the overall total. If you couldn't get a measurement across the whole room, make sure one side of the room is the same as the other side of the room, within three or four centimetres or so. So I've got uh, 39, which is spot on. Let's take this measurement here, 437.5. That's close enough. Looking back at this, I realised that I wrote down 1100, which is the length in millimetres and not centimetres. So we can cross that zero out. Now we need to measure the ceiling height. And we can do that by extending our tape measure and pushing it up as we go. Down to the floor, up to the ceiling, and that is 242 centimetres. 242 centimetres. Height equals 242. Next we measure window sills. We measure the height for the underside of the sill, which here is 108.5. And then we measure to the top of the window and the architrave, which is 99. Not every window is as easy to get to. So on this type of window, you can measure the height to the top of the worktop 90.5 and then you can measure the distance between 5 and add them together. It's also useful to have the reveal depth. That's the depth the window stands back into the wall. So here we have 8 centimetres. Our plan is almost complete. If you have boilers or other things in the room that need to be measured, mark those on the plan Give them a name and measure the distance from the walls and height from floor. And the height of the boiler itself. Other things we find like boilers could be gas meters. If you know where the water main comes into the room, label that on the plan as well with its approximate position. And now we have all the measurements, all we need are photos. The first photo to take though, is the photo of the plan you've just drawn. Then, photos all the way around the room. What we're looking for is pictures that show the floor and the ceiling. And because you'll find that the room is wider than your lens, take multiple photos. As many as you can, as many as you like. We'd also like photos of the consumer unit, where the trip switches are, the gas meter, and anything else that's in the room that might be relevant. And once you've got those photos, send them to Stacy and Margaret by email. I am working on another way that you can send them to us, but for email, probably only two or three images per email, because otherwise they might get made very small and hard to read. And I'm sure all of us are gonna get stuck at some point with this, so when you do get stuck, do give us a call and speak to us, Margaret, Stacy, or myself, Steve, and we'd love to help you. We're really looking forward to doing some more design work and designing your rooms. So when you're ready, Look forward to speaking to you. My name's Steve, this is Roots Kitchens, Bedrooms, Bathrooms.